So uh, our next speaker is uh, Andrew Roche. Where is he? So uh, Andrew is a software developer in uh, OctoML, um, and his main work is uh, is around the, um, of course, uh, he's, so he's a committer and uh, also a committee uh, member for the Apache TVM. He's leading the work around the micro TVM, which is a very very interesting. Uh, I think to topic and uh, tools for uh, for everyone. Great, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Andrew Roish uh, and uh, software engineer at OctoML. I'm also a member of uh, Apache TVM's uh, project management committee. Um, so I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about whole model optimization with Apache TVM. So let's get started. So uh, just to uh, start with something that's uh, near and dear to probably most of our hearts here is just. Uh, uh, deploying this very simple CNN onto a very tiny device like the one uh, shown here. And why is this challenging? <laughs> and I guess to, to be blunt, uh, tiny SOCs are tiny. Uh, there's less memory on these devices, so we have to be a lot more careful about how we use it. Uh, there's a slower CPU on these devices, so efficiency becomes much more important. And on top of all this, we might have to think about power constraints uh, because we might be battery powered. Uh, meanwhile, these traditional ML stacks that we use to actually train the models or, or run them um, kind of on, on desktop machines, they're giant. And uh, there are minimalist Python uh, implementations out there. I've uh, shown CircuitPython and MicroPython here. But you know, if, if you wanted to try to take a giant hulking ML stack like the you know, x86 TensorFlow runtime and run it on a microcontroller, uh, good luck with that. It's going to be a bad time. <laughs> so let's describe this challenge a little bit further. Um, what we want is uh, a way to translate models from popular training frameworks uh, into some kind of library that we can load onto these microcontrollers and, and execute. And we want this, uh, you know, ideally we want like a tool to do this so we don't have to do this manually. And we'd like it also on top of that to be fast, small, and accurate so we can actually compile it onto these devices. So uh, how can we do this? Let's consider a, a simple approach. What if we let someone else, just for a second, deal with the fast, small, and accurate part. In other words, what if we start with a library of, uh, of hand-optimized layer implementations? Well, if we had that, we could uh, basically step through each layer in the model and just map each layer in that model to a, a call into that library. By calling these library functions in the order that the layers present themselves in the model, we can implement a model on a device. And this works pretty well for single core systems. But I want to look a little bit at what microcontrollers are starting to look like, what they already look like today, and what they're going to look like um, kind of uh, coming down the, the line soon here in the future. Uh, microcontrollers are quickly becoming much more complicated. Um, as you can see here, I've added a, another CPU on board here. The CPU might have the same architecture as kind of the original CPU on the microcontroller, or we might have sort of a big little arrangement where one CPU is a lot more powerful than a smaller CPU, but the smaller CPU um, is a lot lower power. Um, but on top of that, also coming soon are these heterogeneous compute architectures, where accelerators uh, kind of live in the same system as a CPU, um, and they can work together to achieve faster inference. Our, pro our transpiler approach just got a lot more complicated here, because now we have two libraries to choose from. And for each layer in the model, we have to make a decision. Which library do we use to actually implement this layer? Now, it's not just as simple as comparing these two libraries side by side. The question might change depending on the workload here. Uh, for smaller layers, it might be faster to implement them on a CPU, whereas larger layers, even if it's the same operation, might be faster to offload them to an accelerator. Uh, but accelerators come with other architectural challenges that are also hard to, to model. For example, uh, accelerators might compute out of their own SRAM, and that SRAM might not fit every single workload that we want to load into, the, uh, that we would like to compute with that uh, accelerator. So uh, we have to think about that. On top of that, we have to think about, is it even worth it to transfer a workload out of a main CPU memory into this accelerator CPU memory, or so can we somehow orchestrate that transfer while doing the previous compute layer? And lastly, failing all of that, maybe we should just use the second CPU and try to speed up the computation out of main RAM. But is that actually faster? So now we've kind of started to motivate that we might want some kind of a tool that could help us think about all these things as we're lowering things down to, microcontroller, to, to implement on the microcontrollers. And when we're thinking about all of these challenges, we really start wanting um, to know things like, what is the model of the system we're running on? How do we actually represent these tensors in the backing SRAM? And what it might the overall structure of the, the implemented program look like? If we want to do this in a generic way, now we're starting to motivate the need for a, a full-blown compiler. So for that, I present Apache TVM, 
which is an open source uh, deep learning compiler. Uh, TVM accepts models defined in uh, popular machine learning framework uh, formats defined, uh, shown above. And it translates these models to work, to work on a wide ver uh, variety of hardware, things all the way from data centers, GPUs, uh, data center GPUs and CPUs, all the way down to the tiny ML uh, style SOCs that we motivated the beginning of this talk with. Uh, TVM uh, TVM's been around for about five years now. Um, uh, it's been used by uh, big industry players. Um, and it's an open source project with over 750 contributors from both industry and academia alike. And at our recent TVM user conference uh, this past year, we had over 700 attendees. So now that I've introduced TVM, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about MicroTVM, which is a subproject in TVM uh, that I've primarily worked on uh, that uses TVM to compile uh, models to run on bare metal devices. MicroTVM works uh, without assuming an operating system, so it doesn't require any sort of files, shared libraries. It doesn't assume virtual memory, uh, so it doesn't uh, require malloc, and it implements memory uh, kind of in a planned way. Uh, and it doesn't require any advanced programming languages, although you can use uh, languages like C++, Rust, Python with any of the compiled output, should you want to. Uh, the MicroTVM vision, uh, it aims to help codify and automate the process of taking a model and deploying it onto any hardware target while taking into account um, the type of hardware available, the constraints of the individual application, uh, and the model itself being deployed. And what this really means is building languages that describe these problems and then finding a way to link these together uh, into a tool and to find well-understood transitions between those languages. Let's see what we get out of this uh, translation process once we're all finished. What do you actually get out of the, the box if you implement a model with MicroTVM? Um, so MicroTVM will implement a model in C, and what we're looking at here is the top-level main function that sort of calls the various layers um, that are implemented in different library functions in a model. And you can see uh, a lot of similarities in this main function uh, to the example that we started with here. All the calls to layers are just kind of um, listed out here in plain C. Any firmware programmer can approach this output inspect it, compile, uh, uh, debug it, and modify it as they need to. Now these layers could be calls into, um, uh, into uh, an off-the-shelf library like CMSSNN, uh, but TVM can also generate its own optimized kernels for any hardware that MicroTVM can run on. And if we take a look at those optimized kernels, what do we see again? Again, here it's just plain C. So uh, again, firmware developers can take the output of this compiler, they can inspect it, debug it, work on it. How do these native operators uh, actually compare? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me skip slide here. We're actually one, one, uh, one slide different here. So, um, so talking about those languages, um, let's talk about how TVM actually goes and takes those languages um, and uh, take, takes those models and uh, lowers it down to uh, operate on a on a, a microcontroller. In phase one, we start with a, a model import process, and that's where we. Um, uh, inspect a, a model that's defined in these open source uh, deep learning compilers, and we translate it to, uh, to represent it in a language that TVM calls Relay. Now, Relay is a, um, a graph level language, uh, and the, the job of Relay basically is to take into account the canonical difference, or the, excuse me, the small differences between each different deep learning framework. So for example, if uh, TF Lite uh, always encodes an activation with, uh, uh, with a convolutional function, we can represent these two things separately in Relay uh, rather than having to join them together. If there's quantization information from an Otix model, for example, uh, that information can be represented in Relay here as well. Uh, once uh, the model is imported into Relay, we then move on to an optimization phase. And that's done partially in Relay and partially in a language called Tier. Uh, optimization centers around a process called scheduling in which chunks of Relay are translated into an imperative language called Tier, and that's where we actually go and implement um, the, the parts of the model um, in sort of the, the imperative language. Now tier, if you look at this, looks kind of like C. You can see things like for loops, you can see array accesses, you can see additions, uh, but also has higher level concepts like allocations. Um, and you can also trace this back to the fragments of Relay so you can understand kind of the model layers from where, uh, whence this came. Lastly, we move on to code generation. Um, and that's sort of a flexible output format. Um, that's sort of where we take the tier and we translate it into sort of a flexible output format that accommodates a range of applications. So here we're showing C code generation. Uh, you can also generate LLVM IR, in which case we do an IR to IR transform. You can also generate, uh, for example, for higher level data center applications, you can generate CUDA, but you can also generate other binary formats uh, as your accelerator may require, for example. 
I want to zero in on a second here uh, on tier. Why should we even bother with tier? Because a simpler approach here is to go straight from Relay uh, down to the C and LLVM implementation. And that's kind of like what we started this talk with, right? Um, well, the first reason for using tier is that it allows TVM to split apart the, model, the problems of model parsing and implementation. But the real powerful power of tier is that it allows TVM to define procedural optimizations over the model that are agnostic of the output language. And so, for example, if we define a way to uh, optimize something, let's say, using common sub-expression sub elimination, we can apply that uh, approach alike to GPUs and CPUs or whatever other accelerator you might uh, involve in the mix here. Uh, more interestingly, TVM can actually leverage this tier representation to perform common optimizations such as tiling, loop reordering, vectorization, tensorization, uh, and it can do this all uh, semi-automatically by learning from uh, your hardware platform uh, the fastest way to arrange these particular optimizations for an operator. Okay, so let's now talk a little bit about TVM, uh, optimization in TVM, which is kind of what I, I came here to talk about today. Um, today, it's, it's largely split between two worlds. Uh, in the relay world, uh, we focus a lot on graph level uh, optimizations, whereas when we're uh, op optimizing the operator level implementations, that's done more in tier. And although tier kind of backlinks to relay, there are a few places in the compiler with really joint visibility over the two where they can kind of be um, modified. So to take an example, let's look at operator, operator fusion TVM today. Um, we don't have any implementation or information yet here at this level about the implementation of an operator. So to drive operator fusion in a generic way, we have to fall back to sort of a set of labels. Uh, we label each operator with, with sort of a kind field that kind of describes the you know, rough characteristic of the implementation as it concerns operator fusion. So for example, convolution operators, you know, they might, they're not necessarily commutative, but maybe you can tack on uh, fusions onto the end, whereas an add might be a broadcast operator. Once we've labeled things, we then um, use a generic fuser to uh, group, the uh, group the graph level um, program into fusible blocks. And we then reflect those, that fusion um, into the program uh, using, uh, uh, using closures in Relay. Lastly, we send this, uh, this fused program down to our scheduling layer to implement it. Uh, and this all works pretty well, as long as the operator implementations actually uh, obey their labels. Uh, but what can we not uh, do easily here uh, with this approach? What if we want to make fusion decisions based on other things that we don't have, inf uh, other information we don't have available here, uh, such as the loop structure of the implementation, maybe you care uh, how tensor types are represented in memory, or maybe you want to know about the whole program. For example, if you have memory space available, maybe you don't want to fuse for uh, debugging reasons or something like that. We can't make decisions like that using a purely graph level approach like Relay. Uh, so I want to introduce here uh, Relax, which is a new Relay inspired graph level IR. Uh, this has been developed in the open source alongside TVM. And uh, Relax brings language improvements around dynamic shape support, blending third party libraries into your code, uh, as well as bringing an itera iterative interactive compilation process. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say here is that Relax has been authored by uh, and primarily worked on by my colleagues and others connected to the TVM community. Um, this is uh, the work of, of them, and I'm presenting this here as a, uh, something we think will be useful in the TinyML context uh, coming down the road here. So um, looking at Relax, uh, you know, one, of the, one of the core things that Relax brings to the table here is the, no the notion of coexistence. Whereas previously, as we talked, the, uh, the graph level and operator level uh, representations of models in TVM lived in separate um, translation modules. Uh, Relax allows them to live together. So you can see here that on the top, we have a Relax main function that expresses the overall graph and the way the, the model is connected together. Um, but then you have kind of the implemented operator living right alongside the, the uh, top level graph representation here. How does this impact our, relay, uh, our, our fusion approach? Well. In Relax, rather than relying on some kind of um, labeling scheme, we just start by deciding which layers to fuse. And we can do that you know, on a, based on a variety of things. Um, we can look at the implementation of add here to see uh, if we've done something crafty there. Um, we could look at the, we could extract memory planning info about the entire program and, and make decisions based on that. Or if we really want to, we can still fall back on that, um, uh, that labeling approach if we want to. Once we've decided what to fuse, um, we then extract those layers into uh, a separate relax function down below, and then pass this whole program along the uh, traditional relax compilation pipeline um, where those things will be fused together. And so 
having done that, you can then apply the same sort of operator uh, optimization techniques we've used previously with tier, loop, tiling, reordering, compute at, and you can see here that we've now placed the add and exponentiation operator in the same um, uh, group of for loops here. So what's changed now that we've got relax in the picture here? Well, at every, play, at every step of the compilation uh, pipeline, passes have a lot more information to help um, inform their decisions. So in the fusion case, the decision of sort of what to fuse can now be a user-facing decision. It could be implemented uh, by, say, an accelerator vendor in a way that makes sense for their accelerator um, in, in the TVM compilation pipeline. Um, or you know, if we want to, we can still fall back on this pattern-based method, uh, method that's sort of tried and true if needed. And we can also explore some new possibilities. So for example, as I kind of opened the, this section with, let's suppose we're debugging a fused operator and we think one of these three things that is put together is broken. Uh, before, we have no way to sort of uh, tell TVM to, to fuse only as much as is needed. For example, uh, you can't know sort of the total memory pressure on the system at the time that you're making a, a fusion decision in Relay. But with Relax, we can see the implementations and we can see the memory buffers required, so we can go through and selectively decide not to fuse certain operators together to help with debugging. Relax also lets us fuse more complicated operators together, uh, something that wasn't previously possible in, in Relay. Uh, we can now fuse things like multiple convolutions together. And lastly, on MicroTVM, uh, one of the opportunities we're kind of interested in leveraging here is the ability to tensorize these requantization operators um, and fuse those, those two for loops together. Uh, just to talk about a few other parts of Relax that we think are, are particularly interesting, uh, Relax brings support for dynamic shapes to TVM, so models that have uh, some variability there um, uh, can now be represented. Uh, in particular, symbolic shapes here, which we think will be um, uh, interesting on a sort of a tiny ML context, uh, live well and relax. You can now use a, sh a variable and a shape expression and then uh, describe here that uh, you know, the output of this flatten operation is the, the product of the previous um, uh, uh, layer shape. Uh, you can also, uh, relax also brings sort of um, an understanding that TVM, while it, it provides a lot of uh, value in sort of the, the standard library of, of operators that it brings, um, we may uh, start to encounter models that are hard to implement in any uh, deep learning framework. In that case, uh, Relax allows you to sort of elevate calls to third party libraries as a, a first class uh, function here. And so um, previously, while you had a bunch of hoops to jump through to teach TVM about this, Relax kind of allows you to express that naturally. Lastly, all of this is wrapped up in a natural Python interface we call TVM script. And TVM script uh, kind of allows you to manually author these uh, transforms um, and, uh, and try them out, see if they work, before you have to commit all the energy to, excuse me, to uh, programming these into the compiler. So where does Relax sit now? Uh, Relax is a proposed addition uh, today to TVM's mainline code base. Uh, it was initially prototyped alongside TVM by members of the TVM community. Um, it's early days for Relax, but I think the project is at a stage where um, you know, it would uh, love to get feedback from early adopters. It will be a few more months before we can start leveraging these techniques on tiny ML devices. Right now, Relax requires kind of a runtime VM that makes it um, hard to, to lower to uh, microcontrollers. But in development right now is a way to take this Relax code and lower it down to uh, the ahead of time runtime that we use with micro TVM. Uh, to sort of provide this uh, allocationless model implementation. Um, and so uh, stay tuned for that work uh, to land uh, in the next, uh, in the upcoming months here. Um, and we think that, you know, as this applies in TVM, we'll start to be able to see uh, applying these kind of uh, post-scheduling techniques uh, uh, to problems especially related to these heterogeneous compute architectures where you've got an accelerator in the mix here. So I'd just like to kind of wrap up by talking about ways you can get involved with MicroTVM Relax. Um, again, uh, they're all community-driven efforts, and we'd welcome new contributions, new contributors. Um, I'd like to point you here to the incubating um, URL for Relax, um, as well as point out that we have a uh, robust community uh, forum, as well as a Discord. And uh, we have a weekly community meeting that I'd like to invite everyone to, uh, to attend. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, OctoML, of course, is working on uh, problems like this. And if problems like this interest you, please uh, get in touch. Uh, we do have uh, positions available. And with that said, I'd just like to wrap up and say thanks to everyone for listening to my talk today. And thanks to the uh, members of the TVN community that are authoring and contributing all these great changes. So I'll take questions.